joining the army is not just a job but rather a way of life you are taken from civilian street and trained to operate in adios conditions within some of the most dangerous places on earth but no one stays in the army forever this is where the transition back to civilian can be tricky and to some people very challenging in this series i speak to men and women who's been there and done it i find out how they managed to successfully transition back to civilian life and what they would have done differently it is my hope that this video provides some valuable tips for serving personnel looking to successfully transition back into civilian life. This is their story. My name is Lawrence Samoa. I'm originally from Ghana, but I live in Maystone with my two beautiful girls, Inshira and Asada, and also with my wife, Anita. Yeah, I work as a company director for a construction firm that is based in Essex, in uh, Loughton Business Park. I also uh, work as a chartered health and safety practitioner, and I currently started doing a side business as a, a digital business owner. Since leaving the army, I have gone on to progress to do my PhD. So I have got a doctorate in philosophy in construction management and fire engineering. Uh, I would say yes and no. Yeah, uh, growing up in Ghana, uh, when I completed uni, uh, uh, UCC, uh, I had wanted to join uh, the Ghanaian army but for one or two reasons I wasn't able to join so after completing my national service when I moved over here I saw it that it was a good opportunity uh, for me to be able to enroll uh, in the British army and uh, that was the path because in the first place I wanted a bit of a job security so uh, I did a lot of manual work in since I came to the UK at the time doing a bit of security uh, working as a parking attendant. I didn't see it as a very secure job for me. So there was the need for me to find a very secure job. So that was one of my main reasons why I enlisted in the British Army. Ha, uh, I think uh, I was a very chubby person. Probably I'm still am now and I'm trying to lose a bit of weight. So during that time before I enlisted, I was uh, doing security, uh, door supervisor and also CCTV security. So I was a bit chubby at the time. So I found the training very, very difficult. I, I really struggled with it, going through uh, my selection process and even through basic training. There were a lot of my colleagues, uh, Sapa uh, Abudu, shout out and Sapa, Sapa Amuzu. They were very helpful because uh, Abudu, for instance, he was a very fit lad. So most of the time during the weekends, he was taken out for runs. During the weekdays, he was taken out for runs during our selection process and also during uh, Big C training. So he was very instrumental. So I wouldn't say uh, it was easy. It was very difficult for me. I even sustained an injury, a groin injury during basic training. And most of the time, when I remember when we were at uh, Gibraltar Barracks, most of the time they sent us to run around piano and everybody will be running around. But I was always the last person when we're doing, when we're giving those kind of, I would say, I wouldn't call them punishment, they call it thrashing, when they were thrashing. And so I didn't find it easy at all. Also, I couldn't swim. My first time I got into the swimming pool was when I joined the army. So obviously being a combat engineer, being a royal engineer, you are expected to pass your swimming test. And here is someone who hasn't even jammed in the pool before. So I really struggled with it. I was going for swimming lessons every morning and also in the evening in my own time I was uh, motivated to go for my swimming so that I'll be able to pass my swimming test to help me to be able to pass out because I didn't want to be as they call it back tripped so that it will probably prolong my training during that particular time so I really struggled with basic training I would say but in the end I was able to pass out both basic and also my training at 3 RSME. I think uh, I did my training at uh, Lichfield. So when I arrived at uh, Staffordshire, uh, what do you call it, station, 
we got picked up. There were about almost 32 of us. We got picked up by a military van. And when we arrived at the camp, the first person who met us was a sergeant, our troop sergeant at the time. And he said to us, do you guys realize that when you finish your training in about 18, six to 18 months time, you could be deployed to Iraq or Afghanistan because that was when the Iraq and Afghanistan war was being fought. And you could die at the time. So whoever is willing to proceed with the training, stand on one side. If you are not willing to proceed with the training, stand on another side. So <laughs> that, that was uh, a lot of thinking and a lot of th uh, thoughts going through my mind at that very time. Should I move to the right side where I want to continue with my training or start with my training? Or probably, yeah, and probably die in about six to 18 months time. Or possibly being a loser and just join, uh, what you call it, uh, the coach and go back home. But that wasn't a choice that, or a decision that I was willing to make because I was motivated to be able to uh, start with my training and also ultimately to be able to pass out. So I did not give up at a particular time. And I joined obviously the queue, which I progressed onto my training. And later on, I was able to pass out successfully despite all the challenges I experienced during my training. Uh, my first posting, initially I wanted to, I had wanted to be posted to Germany, but I didn't get that posting because a lot of people had chosen it at the time. So my first posting was in Ripon, in North Yorkshire. I would say they expected me, because coming from a training, they expected me to be very fit and obviously to be able to fit straight into, uh, what you call it, the army life within my troop. But here was the person, or here am I, suffering with uh, lingering with an injury at that particular time which I had not healed. It took about almost six to eight months before my groin injury was able to get better, I was able to heal. So the following Monday, yeah, there was a PFT, yeah, <laughs> personal fitness test that was uh, organized for us 1.5 mile and we were expected to pass it under 10 and a half minutes. I really struggled with it. Even though I passed all my press ups and the sit ups, that was very easy. But the running, I still passed it, but I really struck. I just passed and nicked it just by a few seconds. So I really struggled at the time. But luckily for me, or I wouldn't say probably, luckily or unluckily for me, uh, within three months after I arrived at my, uh, in the field army or within camp, yeah, we were deployed, we were about deploying to Afghanistan. And that was my first tour of Afghanistan for six months. Uh, personally, I wouldn't say I have uh, experienced any psychological impact because being a logistics specialist, I was not really on the front line. I didn't actually experience uh, what you call it, front line operations, being, seeing someone being blown up or someone being killed or becoming, losing their legs or and their limbs. But I would say I have had a few uh, opportunities to speak into colleagues who are probably experienced, experienced uh, similar injuries or maybe gone through those uh, traumatic PTSD experience that. So even though I don't experience it, but I think I still feel for those who are still going through all those traumatic experiences. And it's not just them, it's their survivors, it's their family and their loved ones who are also feeling the effect of it. Because when you finally leave and you come into the civilian world, it's a different ball game altogether. You have to be able to fit in. And such people normally struggle to be able to fit in with the civilian world. I think uh, the, the trigger for me, it was for family. That's the first one. And the second one, I will probably say, was down to my career path, the path that I wanted to progress, obviously, in my career. Because it got to a point, I realized that I had done six and a half years and I wasn't really progressing in terms of ranks within the army because I had several injuries, uh, what you call it, uh, with my feet. So, and out within the army, unless you are very fit in the army, uh, career progression is very limited for you, especially within the Royal Engineers. It was very limited for you. So I thought that at the time I had probably peaked 
and I should find something else to do. So the first one was family, so I could spend a lot of time obviously with my family and also my career progression to be able to go out into the civilian world and obviously find a career that I wanted to do that will help me to be able to progress on, the, on myself, develop personally and also to be around when my family needs me. So, how was the transition period for you? Okay, well, with my transition, I would probably describe it as a bittersweet one because uh, when I knew that I was about to leave within my uh, one to two years before my exit, I knew I was going to go into the health and safety. So, immediately I had that plan in motion, I decided to enroll my course myself on the uh, a master's degree from the University of Sunderland so I was doing that as a part-time doing my uh, university uh, what you call a degree my MSc online and also serving as a full-time soldier obviously at that time I had already put in my uh, termination, termination notice to leave my the army so I was also transitioning into the civilian world so there was a bit of flexibility for me to be able to uh, have enough time to do my studies and uh, combine it, obviously serving uh, what you call it full time as I was preparing to leave the army. So would you say what the army gives you, resettlement, so all the courses that the army give you, do you think is adequate? For me, majority. for me, because I wanted to go into the health and safety, I think it was very good for me because I was able to use my enhanced learning credits. I was able to use that, those amounts that you get. I think at the time it was about a thousand pound after you've done, maybe I'm, I stand to be corrected, about three or four years. I don't know whether it's still the same. Yeah. So I was able to use that to go on the various courses because a lot of the health and safety courses, i.e. the NIBOSH safety, NIBOSH construction, and the, uh, what you call it, NIBOSH environmental that I got, in addition to also studying my MSc, I was able to do all of those courses using my uh, learning credits and also my enhanced learning credit. The, uh, the funding that I got, that was what I was able to use. For, for me, I would say that it was really good for my settlement. But if you are going to be doing in any, uh, what you call it, any other ventures or any other career path, I think that you can use those credits also to pay towards uh, some of the amount towards whichever course because I know a few friends who went into doing working for BT becoming oh, a BT okay. engineer who were able to use that amount to pay for towards uh, similar courses because the courses were a bit more expensive another colleague of mine he went into being a coming a, a crane operator and the course was about three and a half grand so he used part of that money, some of that enhanced learning credit, the thousand pound, to make that particular payment towards that course. So depending on any field, any career path that you decide to choose, I think there is a possibility to be able to use that money. And there are also a few people who probably didn't have any first degree at the time. So if you, didn't, you don't have any first degree, then you can also, the army, and you've done a four-year service at the time. I don't know whether it's still the same. Yeah. You are, they, they will pay for you to go and do a full-time degree. They will pay for you to do a full-time degree. So there's a colleague of mine also who went on to do a BSc in pharmacy. And now he's working full time for NHS in the uh, what you call it, the uh, uh, Dartford Community Trust. Oh, working so for the NHS. Basically, you have to look for or you have to research what you are entitled to. Yes, mm. and uh, there is a lot of uh, what you call it, the career transition uh, team or the officers. Sometimes some of them are very good, depending on the regiment that you are. Mm. Some of them might give you very false hopes yeah. and advices. So. It, it is it dependent on you as the individual because you are you are you are going to be having your own career path that you want to follow yeah. so some of the advice they give are very good yeah. some of them I would say not very so good say I'm in the army yeah and I'm going to leave yeah what will be the strategy for me I would say, uh, what you call it, in addition to planning, planning is obviously the most important thing to do, is the ultimate. For the first thing I would probably say is 
you have to make sure you've got enough savings. Okay. You have to make sure you've got enough savings. Savings is very important. When I left the army, it took me about three to four months before I was able to <laughs> find a decent job or the, or the career path that I wanted. So it wasn't easy. I was staying at home, going to the job centers, and also I had to apply at a point in time for, I had to apply at a point in time uh, for uh, what you call the support from support. the government, i.e. from the job center. So if you haven't got a, a savings which is going to serve you as a buffer, then obviously yeah, you have to think twice about it if you are planning of exiting or leaving the army. The second thing I'll probably say is uh, family. You have to plan and or you have to prepare your family about the exit because when you are in the army there is a lot of comfort that come with it because at the time I remember I only had uh, one child but the army had given me a three-bedroom house with a garage yeah when leaving the army I said maybe you've got enough savings out there to go and probably pay a deposit for your own mortgage if you're going to be going down the council route to applying for accommodation having just one child there's no way you're going to get a three-bedroom house because there is already scarcity on accommodation yeah so it was a bit of a luxury for me was on the army living in a three-bedroom house with a garage so you have to prepare your family because there's a lot of dynamics there's a lot of dynamics out there when you've left the army you have to prepare your family so and the next one the next point i will probably say is uh, about networking because here is someone who is completely green you are completely green and uh you all you your colleagues street. you don't know anyone on the civil streets or you probably have a few friends and family out there but i'm talking about professionally mm -hmm. so you have to start prepping yourself start networking so if there are any events that you get as part of the career transition partnerships sometimes maybe barclays has got a program uh, and there are a lot of companies out there nowadays who want to recruit personnel coming leaving the army because they they need our skills they need the discipline the commitment mm -hmm. the loyalty and the integrity that will bring into the corporate world so if you've got such experiences such skills even though it might not be directly related to the road that you're going to go but you it's, it becomes a transferable skills that you can easily pass on to be able to fit any within any company yeah yeah that they want so i would say networking you also have to look at probably uh, updating or if you haven't already got one setting up a page on your your linkedin linkedin okay. yeah because that is a professional way so it's all about marketing isn't it you it's can all have the best product if you don't market it and exactly someone. exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah so if you need someone to professionally help you to be able to update your cv then obviously go ahead go ahead mm. You can even pay for the army helps you to uh, to put together your own CV. You can get a free reviews on LinkedIn, and sometimes you might have to pay a small fee for people to help you to update your CV. So instead of having the uh, military uh, what you call it specification or speak on there they're able to put a spin on it and transfer your skills obviously into the civilian world civilian yeah so when you your your cv appears in the front of uh, let's say hr manager who is recruiting for let's say uh, hsbc bank or recruiting for uh, bt or recruiting for virgin mm. they will be able to understand those terminologies that those military jargons yeah. that you're putting out there and that's what the professional cv writer are going to help you so you said something about digital business what can you tell me more about that i would, I would like to you know get to know about it yeah so uh last quarter of last year as well as working as a full-time chartered health and safety professional and also a, a company director as i said earlier on as oliver twist i always want more because i've realized that i've got a lot of responsibilities back home in ghana and i've got a few projects that i'm delivering in ghana as well so in addition to doing all of those projects i support my siblings as well and i believe that most people who might be watching me if you are from that part of the world where i come from ghana or maybe africa or even from any developing country you might have a few family and friends that you do support uh what you call it back home 
So there was the need for me to be able to make or earn additional income. There was the need for me to be able to make additional income so that at the end of the day, the income or the money that I'm getting from my nine to five work is not going to be squeezed. It's not going to be squeezed. So that was when I chanced upon this advert on uh, YouTube and there were also a few adverts on uh, Facebook. When I came across it, being uh, a student of research, I did my own investigation, I did my own checks, and I found out that this online business is what I have always been looking out for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's what what I've always been looking forward out for because I knew it had the potential because there were a lot more people who were already doing it. At the minute, our community has got about 115,000 people. Okay within our community with doing this online or digital business and it a few people who have started the job at the time within let's say a year or two they've actually quit their main job and they are doing this online or digital business as full time so i knew that was a great opportunity so i can park yeah you can park there that was a great opportunity for me to be able to earn any additional income that i probably required as well so that was the motivation that I need. So all that I had to do is the individual who was uh, doing the advert had the video. Mm -hmm. So I watched the video and after watching the video, I clicked on the link within uh, what you call it on their website. I entered my details and they sent me loads of information about the online business. So after watching all the training videos, I had to register and also pay uh, a low cost fee. And the best part of it was that low cost fee that I paid, there was a 30 day money back guarantee on that low cost fee. So after looking into the business, if I wasn't happy with it, I had 30 days to be able to get my money back. But of course. I didn't get my money back because here I am doing the business because Mm -hmm. after looking into it, I realized that that was exactly what I've been waiting for. Mm -hmm. That is exactly the business that I've been looking to do because I could do it part time. I can do it from anywhere because all the only thing that you needed was access to a smart device. It can be your laptop, it can be your desktop, it can be your tablet or even your mobile phone and also Wi-Fi or internet connectivity. That's the only thing that you needed. So guys, if you are interested, you can visit my website www.lawrenceamawa.com www.lawrenceamawa.com or you can go to my Facebook page, it's the same name, Lawrence Amawa. Check me out send me a dm send me a message i've got my mobile phone on there as well you can contact me you can uh uh, contact me message me and i will give you more information about this digital business and i promise you that you will never regret that uh what you call it you've looked into this business because i am doing it and it's helping me to realize the additional income that i need on the side as well so look into it and uh, you'll be glad that you did and you can become my business partner in the next couple of weeks yeah um, i'll put a link in the video description as well so to make it easy to go on so finally final 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 in a brief statement what will be your final words for people who wants to leave the army yeah, my final words will be probably going back to the points that I I will reiterate the points that I mentioned earlier. Yeah, it's about savings because you don't know what is on the other side of the wire, as we normally say within the army. So if you haven't got enough savings, then that probably is not the right time for you to be able to leave. You have to obviously now the cost and the standard of living is going up, it's rocketing every day. So the first thing that you're probably going to be hit with is probably if you haven't got enough savings, your rent that you're going to be paying or maybe your mortgages that you're going to be paying, that is going to be very painful. And that takes a chunk, if not a third, almost about half of the money that, what would you call it, you'll be making on civilian street. Yeah, so savings is always very good. Prep your family. You need to prepare your family as well so that in in case they develop the shock absorbers, Mm -hmm. in in case that there is any, uh, what do you call it, any shocking changes in their lives, probably they have got enough time or there isn't enough money coming in, then they will be prepared for it. They will be prepared for it because sometimes people leave and they are me because they haven't prepared. There is a lot of shock 
and they uh, uh, revert to probably alcoholism drinking doing drugs and all of that you don't want that to happen to you because otherwise it's just going to cause a broken family you're probably going to lose your wife you're probably going to lose your kids or your kids will probably w- wouldn't want to probably see you anymore so savings obviously prepping your family for your exits and also the last one i talked about you need to network start networking get yourself ready prepare a cv or get someone to help you to be able to prepare your cv and once you've done all of these things the overall thing will be the god factor Mm -hmm. you need to be constantly praying yeah wherever religion that you belong to if we're muslim uh if we're christian which i am so i'll be i I believe in prayers if any form of religion then obviously then you have to commit yourself to it and make sure that obviously you are doing your best to be able to provide for the needs of your family and your loved ones and as you know those are the very important things why we exist and why we are so is it doable Definitely. If I can do it, then uh, everybody else, everybody else can do it.